I'm Ben Fisher, I'm the Design Director at Radiant Worlds and uh, that extends to being the Design Director on Skysider. The game is a living, breathing, growing thing um, and the best way to coordinate the design is um, to have one person effectively who's coordinating the creative goals and making sure the game grows in the right direction. So that's my job, is to make sure that each of the little teams of people that are working on parts of the game uh, are working towards the same common goals. Well, it used to be when you were designing a game you could effectively design the whole thing on paper. Uh, when you're working on something quite simple um, or you're the only person working on it, it means that every part of the game comes entirely from you and you're going to make it all stick together. So you can plan it all on paper and then implement it. Uh, the, when projects get bigger and when projects are more about the relationship between you and the players, uh, your approach has to be one where you effectively make a sort of set of design philosophies, so creative goals. Um, you've got feelings you want the player to have when they're playing the game, you've got um, sort of emotional experiences you want to bring to the player, um, and you've got potential ways of achieving them. You've also got uh, sort of, you take the people you've got on your team and you balance that with what emotional goals you're trying to achieve and find a nice balance between the two. Um, when you've got a team as big as Sky Saga, uh, the way that you coordinate it is you group into scrum teams. So you'll have a team that has a mix of different skill sets. So you'll have designers, artists, animators, programmers, audio guys, sort of effects and rendering guys, whatever disciplines are required to achieve a particular part of the game. And then that team kind of um, coordinates itself. You'll work with the head of that team, like the scrum lead, to uh, communicate the creative goals and you'll check in with them as you go. Um, but by and large, you set goals, you let those teams come up with their own solutions to the creative problems you're trying to solve, um, and then you work together iteratively. So there's lots of people asking me questions, there's lots of answering emails where people have hit a roadblock and they need help. Um, it's a sort of, it's quite a constant thing. Team Deathmatch. So as art director, I'm um, in charge of the overall vision for the project, um, how the game looks. Um, I also manage the art team, uh, make sure that they have a consistent vision from which they, they run from, um, make sure they have somebody to talk to, that they have direction when they need it, um, make sure it fits to the game's design and the, um, the project's goals really. The art team is, a, is a, approximately 20 people. Um, this range is from um, animators, concept artists, character artists, uh, environment artists, special effects. Um, and in some places it, it crosses over. We have technical artists, we have a rendering team. Um, so there's a lot of collaboration between the teams. Um, we don't all sit in one particular art team area. Um, we're split up between the different um, kind of scrum groups. They're the groups that lead a particular area. So in the character team, you'd, for, as an example, You'd have the character artists, a concept artist and an animator, but also you'd have a designer and a coder um, working alongside them. And initially, if we're, if we're creating something new for the game, such as a, such as a creature, um, we'd, have, we'd make sure we'd all get together, particularly with the designers and with the AI coders and make sure we understood the requirements of what the creature needed to do, yeah, what its capabilities were, what its movements were, what its attacks were, and how that was going to be implemented. And that would then help influence how we would move forward with the concept. With that in mind, um, typically we brainstorm a couple of ideas, um, some discussions between myself and the concept artist, then between the concept artist and the character artist, the animator, and then the concept artist will go away and, and first off, Kind of maybe do a little bit of reference work, looking at things that are similar, maybe certain creatures to draw reference from. Um, they normally draw up a number of thumbnails, um, where we then get, all get together, pour over them, and find which ones we like the best. Typically, it's never usually just one picture he's done. It's a combination of parts of them drawn together. Um, after that, it's a matter of moving the concept to a final stage. 
passing it to a character artist um, who then model it, then move that to an animator, and then finally move to in game where there's a, a whole load of more stuff needed to be done. Um, that's kind of roughly the flow. So I, I'm kind of responsible as audio director for all the music and all the sound design and any bits of voice recording that we're doing um, and then the implementation of all of those assets into the game. Music is all original composition and I'm creating that I'm on the computer uh, with sequences and VST instruments. Uh, with sound design it's a mixture of, of libraries that we might go out and purchase or sounds that I go out and record myself. Um, like the voxel hit sounds for example, that was a recording session like done in a barn where I had bits of wood and bits of um, metal that I was hitting with different objects to get the different voxel hit sounds. Um, and then others are recorded in house in the studio. We've got a soundproof booth so that's very good for quiet acoustic recording so I can record um, noises in there and then other sounds are made from synthesizers. The inspiration for the music in Sky Saga has come from lots of different places, from classical music and from folk music from lots of different uh, kind of countries, Irish folk music for example, and then film music as well, so it's all range of stuff that I've been listening to that kind of gets filtered down into the music that we put into the game. The reason why we introduced a layered music system uh, was to solve one of the issues that we'd had previously. Because previously, if, say, a chicken attacked you, it would have the same reaction with the music as if, um, I don't know, like an end of level boss attacked you. It would just be telling the music system, AI is angry and coming at you. So we had to put in a threat level so we could have different music types for different enemy types that attack you. So from there, I could then start to introduce sort of three levels of, of threat within the music from something that isn't particularly threatening to something like an end of level boss, where we would have like full on brass, big drums, big strings. So my favorite character in the game, um... I do have a, a soft spot for the very first explorer character. Yeah, this guy here. Yeah, he was he was he was the very first character we ever created. Um, uh, he was the kind of the the eureka moment. We'd created many many different concepts before, but that, yeah, that guy, um, that guy holds a special place to me. He's kind of every, the kind of where everything's kind of moved off from. But I think as we develop the game, the characters become cooler and cooler. So that every new character is kind of exciting. So we've finished off a six and we did some sort of Christmas midwinter themed uh, content for the game to experiment with events and sort of structuring the game in a way that grows and changes over time. We're currently getting stuck into what will be an Alpha 7. I wouldn't want to mention too much of exactly what that is because we're still doing that sort of iterating phase of the process. The stuff that we've got as a potential stuff to go in is looking pretty good. I'm quite excited about what it is. Um, the content that went into Alpha 6 was intended to give players that play in an exploratory style, so our explorer guild effectively, give them a more structured way of playing the game, a sense of progression through being an explorer. So that's not the, the only audience segment we've got in the game. We want to make sure that people that are interested in the other aspects of the game have ways to progress as well. So that's a bit of a clue of where we might be going next in Alpha 7.